Chairman of ESCO, Mr. Simon Hammond, the Rector, Mr. Jay Trafford, the Headmistress of Kidal Schools, Mrs. Claire Huff, Governors, my former colleagues, the esteemed staff of Pitao's Boys and Girls, the young ladies and gentlemen of Pitao's invited guests. It is indeed a delight and a privilege to share this special occasion with you all. After all that has happened, or should I say, not taken place this year, I am glad that we have managed to recognize and reward the accomplishments of these high achievers. Congratulations to all the prize winners of 2020. I was one of those lucky teachers who always seemed to end up on a tour. While I was here at Peter House, I must have held that record for the most tours attended. Maybe Mr. Banda may have wangled into more tours than I did because he went on some national tours. Annual triathlon and hockey tours to South Africa, a rugby tour to England, I even got roped into a B block to Money Money trip. I have fond memories of climbing up Queza Mountain with a bunch of B boys, B block boys singing J's on my feet just to take the mind off the pain. I thoroughly enjoyed these adventures, and it was in these settings outside of the classroom that the true character of Peter House pupils was molded and truly revealed. Allow me to reminisce and share with you some of our experiences and what I came to understand about Peter House boys and girls. The ladies who have done IGCSE study courses with me will know that I like to tell stories. I will never forget our 2006 tour to Michael House in Natal. Of course, it was Mr. Bunda and I taking the boys' first team hockey side on yet another tour. The regular coach, Mr. Scott Elliott, was unable to travel with the team because Mr. Scott Elliott had just had COVID. That is why I was requested to be standing coach. The top SA private schools were at this prestigious Easter festival, and our first match was against St. Stidians, who quickly showed us that we were in for a tough weekend by destroying us 8-0. Since our brother's school had come out to support us, later that day we returned the favour and watched Michael House beat that same team that had left us in disarray. You can only imagine what was going through the minds of our boys as they knew that their final match would be against Michael House. I don't know what Gareth Chappie Chapman, our captain, said to the team that night. Maybe he called a school meeting. You can picture it there, getting the boys together in that little room in my house and say, Attention house! <laughs> and the boys would respond, Attention house! <laughs> I'm sure those boys at my house would not respond like this. Normally it's with more fire. But you could see the desire and the determination to succeed in their faces when they ran out against St. David's for their second match the following morning. We drew two all with St. David's College, and this further lifted the team's belief that the mountain that was my house could be moved. For the sake of time, I will not go into the details of our final match of the festival, but I'm pleased to say that we were victorious and we won that match 4-3. I saw that day that house kings never give up, and when they pull together and work as a team with a common purpose, nothing is impossible. The tour to England was the most glamorous of all the tours I have been on because we played some of the most impressive schools in the UK. Arnold, Uppingham, Oakham, Selborne, and Grindstone. I want to encourage you, the leavers, to keep and maintain a network of friends which you have developed in your time here. Get involved in Patreon events and always look for ways to support each other in your various endeavors. That tour in 2012 was made possible due to the Peter House connections in all these schools. At Arnold, the house mistress of the senior girls was the daughter of Alan McGay, the third rector of Peter House. After leaving Pete House, Reverend Alan McGay went on to be chaplain at Uppingham, 
the second school that we played. At Oakham, we found an ex-director of sport, Mr. Ashley Denman, who helped us immensely with our logistics. Our tour kit was sponsored by Subway, a company owned by a friend of Mr. Huff. And we spent our first week at Hartbury University, training there due to the friendship which Miss Mansfield had with one of the leaders there. We had a superb tour where we were victorious in three of the five matches played. However, I would like to highlight only the second match against Uppingham. The first 15, which included theirs, their first 15, which included some England under 18 players, had just returned from a tour in South Africa where they had been successful. So they were confident that they would make mincemeat of us. At half time, the score was 0-19 in their favour. And when the boys gathered for drinks and their team talk, they were looking like they had been in a war zone. I don't entirely remember the half-time talk, but I clearly recall Mr. Scott Gray, our head coach, taking the fly half, Brendan Mandevinga, to the side and having a quick one-on-one -on -one with him. The second half witnessed some of the best schoolboy rugby that I have ever seen. Young Mundi was absolutely outstanding, putting on a thrilling and a jaw-dropping performance. He displayed his true potential and scored all 21 points to win us the match. The Arnold coach, whose son was the England under-18 fly-half, told us after that match that Brendan would comfortably take his son's place. As you go out into the world, don't ever believe that you're inferior to your counterparts. This great school produces young men and women, including you, who can achieve incredible things on the global stage. Don't hold back from shining your light and being the best that you can be. To be brilliant does not make others feel inadequate but rather lifts up and inspires others to also shine. Because our playmaker was outstanding in, the, in that second half, every player in the team raised their standard, resulting in a memorable victory for the team. In 2014, I saw in a triathlete a display of hard work and perseverance which I had never seen before. Serena Beads Rendell, who most of you will remember, she was a senior in your time, had not been the fastest swimmer at Kidderhouse Girls, nor was she the leading distance runner. She wasn't even the best triathlete in her age group in Zimbabwe, but she had a big dream, a strong desire, and she decided that she would do whatever it took to get to the Youth Olympics. After dedicating much of her time to training, she achieved her dream and represented our school and our nation in Nanjing, China. It is hard to believe that our small triathlon club from little old Marandera could produce such a world-class athlete. But what makes my heart sing is that Pidal's Girls continues to produce young ladies of a very high caliber who are focused and determined to be the best that they can be while pursuing their dreams. You have an example from your own agent, Andy Capers, who is absent today because she is pursuing her own dreams. I hope that these three true stories of a small part of my Peter House experience will encourage you to go forth with confidence in the knowledge that you are fully equipped and well able to excel at anything that you set your mind to. My heart really goes out to you, the leavers of 2020. What a strange year this has been. However, much has been gained from all the adversities that we have faced. We have all been in the same storm, but definitely not in the same boat. So our experiences differ. <coughs> May I quickly highlight what this year has proved true to me? Time. Time is precious and we ought to value it more. If you, the leaders of Tatanga and Tinopura, had known that you had only one turn to pass on the values of this school to the Dijon, 
you would have done more with them in that first term. If you all knew you would go for six months without seeing your teachers, you would have used your time better in fifth form and in the first term this year. If you had known that there would be no winter sports in 2020, you would have given more time to improving your skills so that you could get a chance to represent your teams at the highest level in 2019. I could go on and on, but you get the message. Make the most of the time and the opportunities you have so that you live with no regrets no matter what storms come your way. This year has proved the real value of teachers and that this type of education is still the best in the world. We have seen many industries in recent years disrupted and some even destroyed by technology. However, I am sure that all stakeholders, whether parents, staff or pupils, will agree that they would rather have the girls and boys here than working online. I would like to encourage the older teachers, the buddies like me, to expand on what we have learned this year and make technology an even greater component of our everyday lessons. Lockdowns also proved and reminded the world that we are relational beings who cannot live without being in relationship with others. As I have mentioned earlier, keep in touch with your friends, not just on gadgets, but in real life. Attend patient functions wherever you are in the world and return for reunions and the annual Patreons weekend, even if you know that Falcon will win. <laughs> I have to throw that in for my friends. Keep in touch with your teachers. We do love to hear from you. Most importantly, stay connected to your family. Family is more important than any money you will ever make or anything that you will ever achieve in this life. Thank you for embracing this Falcon boy, my wife, and my children into the extended Pidaos family. And thank you for granting me this incredible privilege of being your guest of honor today. Congratulations once again to the prize winners of 2020. May the Lord bless you all of you.